Hi again, it's Greg Hughes with 90 Second Website Builder. I want to continue our discussion about creating responsive websites. And what I've got on the screen right now is a page in progress. It's not responsive yet. What I have is a 1200 pixel single page that is desktop size with several different objects on it. Now I've got these objects on here for demonstration purposes to show you something that's just the basic fundamental principles of responsive design. You're going to need this information as you work through responsive design because this will help you understand the basics or the foundation of how it all works. The concept is about objects on the page being shared between different breakpoints or different variations of the page. In other words, when you create a responsive page, you're creating a web page that has different versions of the same page. That doesn't mean you have to keep adding copies of objects because they can be shared across those variations. So in other words, while I have this one page right here, when I add breakpoints to this page or additional versions or variations of it, all of these objects are going to be shared it's the same objects, but they're going to be shared in those other versions of the page. Here's how that works. So first of all, let's go up and add a breakpoint. I'm going to go up to the page tool and click on add breakpoint. And I'm going to add a 768 pixel breakpoint. Now, before I click the OK button, I want you to watch the ruler across the top. Right now, you can see that it shows the full 1200 pixel page all the way over to 1200. When I click the OK button, watch that ruler. Notice that it opened up the page at the 768 variation. So that means we now have two versions of this page, the 768 that we just created, as well as the 1200 default. Now we always know what version or what variation we're designing in because we can look at the ruler. Right now, I'm in the 1200, but if I click here, I'm now designing the 768. And you can see up here that we're in 768. But you also notice that there are objects on both versions of the page. They're the same objects. What we're going to do is change their locations and their dimensions so that they can appear within the proper viewport or breakpoint. So that's the basic of responsive design, using the same objects but in different locations and dimensions of the page. So we're going to do this again now by adding a 320. So I'm going to go up to the page. Add a breakpoint. This time we'll use 320. Click OK. And notice that we are now designing in the 320 pixel version of the page. Let's bring the camera down so we can see that. So here's the 320. And by the way, when you click on these, you can toggle, you always toggle back to the default. So if I click on this, we're now back to the 1200. And if I click on it again, we're in the 320. If I click on this one, it takes us to the 768. If I click on it again, it toggles us back to the default page size of 1200. What I want you to notice is that we have objects on all these variations, but these are the same objects. They aren't copies of the objects. You wouldn't copy and paste an object from one variation to the other to make it appear. You don't need to do that. It's going to be there because they're shared. However, they are in the wrong locations. So we don't want our 320 version of our website to look like this, obviously, nor do we want our 768 to look like this. So let's talk about how that works. Let's go back to the full version, the 1200 pixel. I've got two objects here. This is an image and this is a video object, a YouTube video. Now both of these objects are responsive. That means they can be shared even though we change their size and location. What I'd like to do is put this object, the video object, on top of my chalkboard here so that it looks like my classroom chalkboard is a video screen. Now in the 1200 version of this page, I'd like these objects to be in the center of the page. Well, where's that? Remember, we have to do a little bit of math. The center of this version is 600 because I'm working with 1200. So I'm going to move this about right here. These objects are in the center of this page. But notice when we go to the 768, I've got a different center. Since I'm working with the 768, my center is now somewhere around 384. So I need to move these objects into a different location. I'm going to grab them and move them to about right here. What I'm looking at is about this mark and lining it up somewhere around 380, just to eyeball what I think is the center of the 768 page. So now while these objects are in the center of this page, in the default, this is the center. Now let's go to the 320 and do the same thing. But you'll notice we have a problem. 
these objects are just too big for the 320. But remember, we can change an object's location and its dimensions without affecting that object in the other page view. So I'm going to shrink this down so my chalkboard is a lot smaller so that it will fit in here. And my video is going to be a lot smaller so that it will fit also in my smartphone variation. Now notice, even though I changed their location and their dimension, the other page variations remain unaffected. Let's look at 768. Everything's fine. Let's look at the default. Everything's fine. That's the basic principle. Most objects, especially images, YouTube videos, things like this can be shared that way without creating additional objects. All we are doing is using the same objects and changing where they appear and how large they are. There are some objects that you cannot do that with, namely something like this one. This is not an image. This is a shape and shapes are not responsive. Here's what I mean. Here we are in the 1200 view. Let's say I want this image to be, we'll just make it longer here. Now let's go to the 768. Watch what happens. You notice it's longer here too. Now I can move it to this location over here for the 768. Let's go back to the default. Now while I can change the location of it, I cannot change the dimension of it without affecting the other page variation. See, in other words, if I make this smaller here and I go back to the 768, it's smaller here as well. So the only thing that a shape can do is it can be moved to a different location, but you cannot change its dimension without affecting the other page variations. If I go to the 320, there it is in position, but the dimension cannot be changed uniquely for this variation. So I can't put this small one here and then go to 768 and make it larger like this because when I go to 320, it's large again. So that's unique about shapes. In most cases, a square or rectangle shape can be replaced by simply using a layer instead because a layer is responsive as you'll see in a few minutes. So using shapes in your responsive design, you need to do carefully because you have to understand that while you can change their location, you cannot change their dimension. I'm actually going to delete this object by clicking the delete button. It's selected and so I click delete and you'll notice that it's deleted from all the page variations. That's because there was only one shape. Same thing would happen if I deleted this object, this text object, if I deleted it, it would go away from all the other ones because there's only one of them. But let's talk about text while we're here. Text is also a little bit different. We have a really big font size for our, say, our default version right here. This, this looks nice here. In fact, let's put this maybe in the center of this. Bring this down a little bit. We don't need it to be this huge. So here's our text here in the center. And if we go to the 768, we can put it in the center without any problem. And moving its location won't bother the other one. So let's go back to default. So it kept its location, kept its location. Now let's go to 320. Now we can't really do this because it's too big. It's not going to fit. We have to make it smaller. Well, if we just select the text and say, well, I think what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just make it a smaller font and I'm going to go up here and make it be something really small so that it fits. There we go. Now in our 320, we'll make it that small. There's a problem. Watch. If I go back to default, look, it acted like a shape. However, we've got a way to fix this. And here's how we do it. Let's go back to default. Let's make this as big as it was. I'm going to change this back to the size that it was, which I think was about, I don't know. So we'll make it 64. Actually, it was smaller than that, but we'll make it 64. So here's our really big font here. And now if you look at the 320, it's just way too big because they can't be unique. Unless, of course, we do this one trick. I am now going to take this text and right click on it, go down to object properties, and we're going to make this text work like an image. It will still be text, but we are going to make it responsive. So I'm checking this box, enable responsive fonts, click OK. And now this text object has the unique ability to be adjusted within the breakpoints. So here I'm going to have it centered in the 768. I'm also going to have it centered, but I'm going to change the size. It's a little bit big. Let's change this from 64 down to 48. That'll look better in this size. And you'll notice that we can do this now because the default still has the big one. 768 has a medium size. And when we go down to the 320, we can select this font and we can change the size of this to be something more appropriate. Let's make it about 18 points. And look at that. 
it fits just fine. Same text object, different location, different font size, and still shared across all variations. One more thing, notice that the layer also works the same. It can be shared. So here I have a 1200 pixel wide layer. If I go to 768, I can change the width of this layer without any problem. I'm gonna move this object over here so that it fits inside. And again, I'll bring this into about 768. And when I go to the 320, I'll change it again. And I gotta do some adjusting. Remember, this is an image, so we can do this without any problem. And I can do this without any problem. And that'll just about fit in my 320. And I can squeeze this down to 320. And that works fine. Layers can do the same thing. So again, we look at the 768, it's working good. We look at the default, everything's fine. So as you can see, you can share objects, layers, images, text, as long as you make them responsive. YouTube videos, and most other objects you can do this with. Forms, most of the things you'll be working with, just recognize there will be some objects that are not responsive, like shapes, or they're partially responsive. Remember, we could move the position, but not the dimension. And then, of course, there are other objects that have unique attributes, like navigation, which we'll talk about in some other videos. But these are the basic fundamental principles of responsive design. So hopefully you'll understand after watching this video and maybe some of the others that you're making one page with multiple versions or variations of the page, but sharing the exact same objects just in different locations in different dimensions. And that will help you with your workflow as you're designing responsive websites in 90 Second Website Builder.